All right, lessons learned. We're going to uh, start fresh here uh, with charcoal. So I've got two different charcoal pencils here. Actually, I've got three different types of charcoal pencils here. Um, these are general charcoal pencils. They're quite nice. Um, you notice that these have 2B and 6B marked as medium and extra soft for those people that did not understand what the Bs meant. Um, I'm going to just work with the 6B here. Um, working with charcoal, right off the bat, I mean, you hear the difference when you're drawing with charcoal pencil. You're going to get a much darker line with charcoal, um, but it's um, cruder, it's rawer, it's rougher. Uh, it picks up the texture of the paper, and a lot of that tends to be because of the quality of the uh, of the charcoal itself. It's just a little bit softer. Graphite's really, really smooth. Um, so charcoal's great. Um, again, it'll give, you, it'll give you some nice lines. You can get some really, really dark, clean lines. Uh, it's just going to be, is that even in the picture frame? It is, okay. Um, let me pull it down here a little bit more. Um, that is, uh, it's just a little bit softer. One of the cool things about charcoal is that you can, I, I did much better on my drawings earlier, guys. I apologize. This is not getting the, the level of detail that I was hoping for because I'm rushing. There we go. Uh, so charcoal gives you uh, certainly a little bit more dark. You can smudge with charcoal, which is kind of nice. Uh, if you're just trying to blend something out a little bit. I am not a big fan of smudging as a general rule of thumb, particularly with pencil. Charcoal, it's a little bit more, I think, accepted uh, as a process, and you should look to see whether your artist uses it or not. Uh, I did also want to show you that they have these uh, charcoal pencils like this that are pretty cool. Um, this is great. Instead of holding it like this, uh, you can hold it like that. And it allows you to get some really beautiful line quality because of the of the way the edges line quality is where it changes along the on its path. Um, so charcoal pencils like this are great to sharpen these guys. You just pull the string a little bit, and then you unpeel all of this stuff off, and you end up to expose um, the lead. Um, it actually expose the charcoal, not the lead. Um, otherwise, if you're trying to sharpen these with a regular sharpener and it's not working, you can use an X-Acto knife and that way you can really control um, the, you know, how much of a uh, tip you get and what kind of tip, how sharp it is and whatnot. Uh, obviously, be careful with the X-Acto knife. But a lot of times when you're trying to use a regular sharpener with the charcoal, and you're just kind of going at it, it, it will break the lead, particularly if it's a soft type of charcoal. Um, I did want to also introduce you to these two little guys. Uh, this one is called, uh, this big guy is called a stump. Stump. And the little guy is called a tortillion. And I believe I spelled that right. Um, these all allow you, particularly with charcoal, to do that blending. But, you know, your, your finger is a blunt instrument. So with the stump, you can really get in and control the blending if you want to. Uh, it also keeps your hands a little bit nicer than it does the, the other way. Um, the little guy is handy, particularly for like super fine detail. And you're really trying to control those lines. So you can make this by rolling up newspaper. It's probably the easiest way. You can also buy them, but uh, I'm, I'm partial to making my own when I get the chance. Ah, that actually looks pretty good. Um, hopefully it's on the screen. So that's regular charcoal pencils. I do want to go ahead and talk to you about a couple other forms of charcoal. Oh, I feel like it's like deja vu. Um, this is called vine charcoal. It's actually usually a piece of willow branch that is then burned and turned into charcoal like this. Um, so vine charcoal, come over here. Vine charcoal. You can already tell it's very dark, but 
it's super, super light, super thin. There's no oil in it, so it doesn't stick to the paper. You have to use it on a surface that has got uh, some tooth to it. So uh, cold pressed paper works a lot better. Don't try to use this at all on, um, on, on hot press because it just slides all over the place, very messy. Um, so vine charcoal, you can again, break it very easily. So just know that sometimes you break it on purpose, um, but you can use this to pretty quickly sketch out um, some detail um, and turn it on its side so you can kind of block in big blocks of, of color or in this case value. Um, then you can switch it to the edge and kind of build it up. So vine charcoal can be nice. Uh, oil painters use this with, uh, to kind of block out their drawing on their canvas because you can just wipe it off, but it leaves just a little hint of the line. Um, so vine charcoal is quite fun. I like vine charcoal. Um, this is called, uh, it's called, I'll show you the box. It's called the charcoal, but it's actually black pastel, black chalk pastel. Um, so I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna write on top of this and call it pastel. And again, if you thought the vine charcoal was soft, this stuff is super soft. It's always square. It's how you can tell the difference. They do have big sticks of vine charcoal, but it's, um, um, uh, but, but they're always round. These guys are always square. So you can just tell by the, the shape of it, what it is. Um, and pastel is great because it's got a little bit of oil to it. So it makes these just really, really dark lines and they, and they, and they, they're beautiful, uh, beautiful lines. Um, not quite as um, wispy as uh, the, the vine charcoal is. Um, and so you can obviously draw with this and create beautiful values. Um, it, it is worth noting, it is pretty, it's a pretty blunt instrument um, as you're drawing. But where we've used these in the past, and I think it was Ayla who had a drawing um, that it uses subtractive method of drawing. A lot of times we'll do this, where we'll just take and take the whole sheet of paper down really dark. I do this project with my Art 2s all the time. It's one of my favorite projects ever. You rub the pastel into the surface. You will get filthy doing this, so just know that. Filthy in a good way. Um, and so we've got our charcoal here. And then we've got two different types of erasers. We've got a gum eraser, uh, which are wonderful, nice hard erasers. And then we've got these kneaded erasers that you can take and kind of knead to make into different shapes. I use this kind of for the blunt, um, big picture. And then I use this for like fine detail. So here we go. So if I'm trying to uh, start my little sphere here, I'll come in with my um, gum eraser and I'll just start pulling that shadow out if you've never tried <laughs> subtractive drawing uh, highly encourage you to check it out it's it's great fun <laughs> and again there's uh, and if your corner gets really dark you could switch up to another kind of clean corner you can even take an exacto knife and cut it and then um, it'll allow you to have a nice clean edge to kind of get those lighter lights again. You never want to do subtractive drawing on cheap paper. It will just literally fall apart. Um, it's really designed for paper that can take a beating. So 140 pound paper in my mind minimum, but that's just my opinion. Um, once I start getting that kind of blocked in, you can see how this starts kind of shaping up. I'm going to come in here with my kneaded eraser to kind of see if I can pull off and get a mid-tone subtractive drawing. It's not easy to pull out a mid-tone. If you practice this, you can get really into it and get some really amazing effects. It's quite remarkable. And again, the cool part is if you mess up, you just go back in and darken it back up. Take another whack at it. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to do that magic little highlight that shows up on the back side of my sphere. Look at that. Huh. If I had put it in the right place, 
It would be great. Um, so again, that's pastel. Um, it's, it's black pastel. It works very, very well. It's really, really dark. Um, and again, it's very oily. So plan on getting really dirty. I'm wearing white pants today. That was a bad decision. Um, so I'm going to stop there and then we're going to talk about contact.